here. Um, and this is the whole point of this of this talk. It's just to talk about how you're going to get better results faster. Makes sense, right? It's just things that you're going to have to do, things you're going to have to avoid, and then just understanding the, the frequency, the rhythm of the treatment, why you need three times a week for X amount of weeks or twice a week. What's the point of that? Okay, so um, I don't want to bore you too much with stats or anything, but if I could do anything to I mean, have an impact on you, I and mean, I hope I just change the way you think about your body, because I think that in the United States, most of us do not think properly about health at all when it comes to our bodies. Like we have a symptom, we take a pill. We have a symptom, we take, take, take a pill. That's the system that's drilled in our heads every single day, wherever you go, it's normal, right? Um, but we spend more in this country, so like which, which country? The United States spends more on healthcare than any other. Uh, we spend $2 trillion a year, so just on chronic illness. Chronic illness is something that's highly preventable. So things like arthritis pain, diabetes, uh, mass reflux, anxiety, depression, all these things are preventable. It's not things that we need to suffer with. But essentially, like with big pharma, they market us to death, make us believe that what we have, we're stuck with. You can't do anything about it. Take these pills the rest of your life, and that's it. So there's no way out. And they love that because it, it creates great customers. But we take 75% of the world's medication, the whole world, we take 75% of it, or 5% of the world's population. So a little bit of a, an imbalance there. Where does the US rate, uh, rate in the highest, the healthiest nations in, uh, by WHO? So like, out of all the westernized countries in the world with the best healthcare systems, where do we rank? Zero to 40, yes. In the middle. In the middle? So 20-ish? As far as how healthy we are? Yep. Oh, man, we got to be near the bottom. By the world, bad. the World Health Organization ranks us number 38. <laughs> no. 38? France is number one, and I love this because a lot of people think fat is bad for you, and fat is, you know, the, the diet in France is mostly fat. Like, okay. they love fat, yeah. Like, lots, of, very, very rich, right? So if fat were bad for you, you would see them at the bottom, but fat is not. This is not a nutrition class. I'd love to get into it, but I don't want to be here too long. But fat's great, like good healthy fats. Um, so the current model is failing. These are all chronic diseases. That, like I said, they're highly preventable. And you could probably list a couple in there, or at least you know some people that have them. Right? And there are definitely natural solutions that you can do that does not involve taking medication that can fix a lot of this stuff here. Uh, so this is kind of scary, but for the first time in the history of man, children born after the year 2000 are not expected to live as long as their parents. So this is uh, Gen, what is it, Gen X? No, Gen Z. X. Gen, Gen Z. Z. It's Gen Z. Yeah. We're Gen X. Yeah, that's right. Millennial. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I missed a millennial by one year. <laughs> I'm the first year, I think, of millennial. First or second. Um, so why are we in such a healthcare crisis? Why is it that we are so sick in this country with all these different ailments? There's a lack of responsibility, and I will tell you, even when you guys come here, don't expect us to fix all of your problems that you're coming here for, whether it's your neck, your back, your headache. I know, right? It's hard, it's hard to hear that, and it's yeah. even hard for us to say that, because we know people are coming here and they want help, but your health is your responsibility. You made the decision to come in here and commit to a care plan. People also make the decision to go to their medical doctor and ask for something and take what's prescribed, right? So that's on us as people. So it's our responsibility to take care of ourselves. Anybody disagree with that? Nope. So the wrong definition of the word health, what does that mean? So when I say we are healthy or we are unhealthy, the word health, sum it up in one word. What is health? Well-being. Well-being. Happy. Happy. Just physically fit. I know it's not one word, but physically fit. So fit. Homeostasis. What? Cheater. <laughs> I might have heard some of this before. <laughs> so health is, most of us think health is the way we look or the way we feel. And we all want to look good and we all want to feel good. And, you know, nobody's going to say that we don't, I don't think. I want to look good and feel good too. But that's not what health is. Health is how your body's functioning. So everybody has probably had an issue with their car at some point in time or was driving fine all of a sudden, check engine light, right? What does that mean? It means there's something not functioning properly in your car. Maybe it's the sensor that's not functioning properly or maybe the sensor is telling you that something is not functioning properly in your car. 
but that's your symptom. That's your body signal. Whether it's your pain, your headache, your digestive problem, whatever it is, your body is trying to tell you something. And all we do is we shut it up by taking pills most of the time. It's like, I don't like that. I really want to eat this Pertillo's chili cheese dog with double onions on it. So I'm going to take these antacids so I can eat it and everything will be fine. Right? So we cover up the symptoms all the time. And I will say I'm not anti-medicine at all, but I don't think we use medicine properly. There's a place for medicine, for sure. It does a lot of great things for a lot of people. But when it comes to treating chronic illness, it's failed big time. So this is about you. So this is just a you know a graph of time and quality of life. Most of us think in this country that as you get older, your quality of life should decrease. Isn't it normal? It's not normal. It's normal because we think that that's how it's supposed to work and basically that's what we do. We just, we have a symptom, we cover it up. And whenever you cover up symptoms without addressing a problem, the problem continues to get progressively worse. So the body breaks down. And when the body breaks down, well, you know, this is what happens here, less quality of life. So this is what is, you know, the norm, but this is what should be happening. My grandfather looked like he was 101 and he was, he was on this path for sure. Doesn't mean you can run as fast at 101 as when you were 20, but you should still be able to enjoy a high quality of life without having all these debilitating diseases. Does that sound like a good idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's okay to have doubts because we don't ever really hear this. It's like it's normal to get old and hurt and everything else. It's not normal at all. And there's a lot of other countries in the world that will prove that. The United States, not so much. So, I mentioned this, so you are responsible for your health. So what is health? We talked about that, right? Function, function, function. And um, just to introduce a couple concepts, it probably makes sense to you, but it's not something that we normally think of. So when I say you are designed to be healthy, right? You're not designed to be sick. So does cancer make you sick? I love this question. Does cancer make you sick? Does cancer make you sick? Or do you get sick and then you get cancer? Your body doesn't function properly, so you develop cancer. Your body is not functioning properly, so you develop a heart attack, or diabetes, or something else. Or exposure. It's exposure, say that. Exposure, you expose yourself to something to cause the cancer. Oh yeah, well that's, yeah, yeah, so that would be like a huge chemical stress or something, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so there's small exceptions to, you know, a lot of these things, but we talk about like, is the body designed to be healthy? If I cut myself, it heals. I don't have to do anything, right? If I eat food, my body knows how to break it down and deliver all those, all those different proteins and fats to the right areas of the body to help regenerate new tissue and stimulate the growth of bone. Always, it never does the opposite unless I'm sick and I'm breaking down. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what we're doing here, when you guys get adjusted, and you'll see a little bit more of this when I show a different chart, but. We are restoring normal function of your spine and your nervous system so your body can heal at a greater level. That's it. That's why pain goes away. That's why a lot of other ailments go away when you start getting adjusted. So your body is smart. Again, what do I mean by that? Right? How is it that two cells can come together to create a human being? Or two? Or three? Or whatever. Right? How does it do that? So the body has this intelligence to it. It's not something that you ever have to think of. It knows how to, your heart beats on its own without you telling it how to, you can digest your food, you, you can fall asleep when you're tired and you can wake up when you're rested. Like your body knows what it's doing all the time. It's the best doctor in the entire world. You have the best pharmacy in the world. And I mean, if the body wasn't smart, you wouldn't have any of that stuff. When you have a fever, what's the point of a fever? To kill the infection. To kill an infection. So why do we suppress a fever? Oh, poor little Johnny has a fever. I feel no, really though, right? Like if I feel so bad, he's fever. Yes, I know. It's not fun seeing your kid sick, but lowering a fever is a terrible thing to do unless it gets into a dangerous range, which is over 105. Five, not two or three, five. Um, so we have to we have to look at that and just have an appreciation. The body knows what it's doing. We don't always have to intervene. We don't always have to put the kids on antibiotics when they have an infection or a sniffle or a cough. The body can heal on its own. A lot of times when we intervene with this stuff, it makes the problem worse. So typically when you introduce antibiotics, you'll get more infection.
because antibiotics destroy the gut completely, and the gut is known for being responsible for about 70% of immune function. So if you destroy the gut, down goes your immune system, and you'll get more and more chronic infections. Right? So we do a lot of this to ourselves, and it starts young. I mean, it really does. So this, I love this chart. So this is like high-level wellness. This is this is death. I don't know anybody who's a 10. I try to place myself in this area here. Maybe this weekend with my daughter's birthday, I was probably maybe a seven or even a five, I don't know. But we always want to strive to do better because this is where true health is. This is false health. So this is where you feel fine and you look fine, but you're not necessarily functioning properly. And understand this, if you're on this scale here, you're either going towards here or you're going towards here. There's really, there's no in between. So where do you think symptoms typically show up on this scale? Zero to 10. Six, five, six. Five, six, maybe. I was gonna say four, five. But five. Well, 30% of the time with people who have heart disease, the first symptom is death, 30% of the time. So they have no prior symptoms. Diabetes takes 17 years to develop. They have no symptoms for 17 years. So they live in this zone here, for most of it, right? But they just, their health keeps deteriorating more and more and more and more. So that's what I say. It's not how we look or how we feel, it's how we function. So how we look or how we feel doesn't mean much, right? So we have to always focus on things that are improving our health, which you have to sleep the right amount, you have to exercise, you have to move. You can't be toxic with your emotions, with, with your relationships, it's horrible, right? And then physically, I mentioned movement, that's really what chiropractic does more than anything else. When I say it restores function, it restores function of your spine, and your joints, and your nervous, system, your nervous system, so you can move better and function better. Easy enough. Same chart. So symptoms are body signals, like I said. They are the tip of the iceberg. And there's a lot more going, going on under the surface there. Either the smoke detector or the check engine light. Same thing, right? We all have done it before where we pulled the batteries out of the smoke detector because it's annoying. And it's just to compare our bodies. When it's beeping, you take a pill, that's what you're doing. You're taking the batteries out of the smoke detector. You're like, ah, oh, great, things are good now. It's not annoying me, right? But there's still a fire and it's gonna have an effect on something. Okay, so these are the points. Healthy is normal. Not sickness, not pain, not normal. Body is smart. And then your spine is your lifeline. So what does that mean? Let's go here. So your nervous system controls everything in your body, right? Anybody disagree with that one? Your brain, right? We all know that. So this is how it works. So your brain sends signals down the spine, called the spinal cord. And then from there, it exits the spine as nerves and it goes to every single cell, organ, tissue, and system in your body. Everything is controlled by your nervous system. How long do you think your heart's gonna function if you cut the nerve to it? Doesn't, it's dead, it's done, right? anything. You cut the nerve, done, dead. So when people are having pain, it's because they typically are having problems with joints in the spine that are misaligned. We call that subluxation. This is a dislocation. This is a subluxation. So it moves partially. Okay. But subluxations put pressure on the, uh, on the nervous system, so on all the nerves. And it doesn't necessarily cause disease right away. But what it does is it does this. Turn down the power that's going to the cells, organs, and tissues. Everybody okay if I use that word power? It's really what it is. Okay, so if you come in with low back pain, right, you may or may not have any problems with your digestion, but I can tell you if you have subluxations in the lower part of your spine and it's irritating your nervous system, it is absolutely causing dysfunction here. And you might not notice symptoms, but it's causing some kind of dysfunction. Eventually, it will. Well, if you're lucky enough, I should say, well. Okay, questions on that anyway? This is like, this is probably the most important thing up there. Does so it make sense? that way, like some people will say they're not having asthma attacks anymore when they're like under chiro care? Yeah, so there was a little the, guy, so a little guy came in, I don't think anybody saw him, he was three. So he had asthma and he was subluxated right here. So all these nerves are going to his lungs are being compromised. And that probably is the biggest story in chiropractic. Like when people become chiropractors, they're always asked, 
at least by other chiropractors. Like, why did you become a chiropractor? Like, well, I had really bad asthma. That's the most popular story. People that had bad asthma when they were a kid, they started seeing a chiropractor and it totally cleared up their asthma. So it's a, it's a big one. Right, but it could be anything. Um, all right, so life is stressful, right? Money, family, job, we all know that. And subluxation is caused from stress. When I say stress, I'm talking mental, emotional, and physical. So mental, emotional subluxations, when you have mental, emotional stress, you actually posture differently, right? So like you see somebody walking like this, you know they're not happy, they're stressed, they're angry, they're sad, they're something. So your mental, emotional state will change your posture and will put more stress on your spine. So one thing you can do, and we talked about this today, when you, you kind of do a fake it till you make it sort of thing, like if you are feeling angry, if you're feeling sad, whatever it is, and you, you notice you're tightening your shoulders, right? You're posturing differently, you actively have to change your posture. Like fake it. You can even yell like happy things. I know it sounds funny, but they call this, um, not affirmations, they call it, um, um, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? It's not an affirmation. But it's like you're saying an affirmation, but you're adding emotion behind it. Right. Incantations, that's what it is. So you're driving it with emotion to, to get yourself out of your negative state. Should I do the superhero pose? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, you can remember this with three T's. Thoughts, traumas, toxins. Thoughts, you got that one? Trauma's pretty easy, right? Football, sports, uh, trips, falls, work injuries, car accidents. That can definitely jar everything out of position. And then the last one, the toxins. So you mentioned exposure, right? Mm -hmm. Chemical toxicity can definitely damage your body. Asbestos damages your body. I mean, anything that's any harmful chemical will damage your body, weaken tissue, weaken your system. And so over time, it can actually affect the health of your spine as well, everything. But that's one thing that can throw everything out. Um, bad habits, sitting. So one, one thing not to do. Right, so when we talk about the three T's, we have to avoid bad chemicals, we have to avoid bad posture, we have to avoid bad habits. Sitting all day, bad, it's the new smoking. Sitting is the new smoking. Cool term, I like it. Um, it's do every day. Yeah, <laughs> it, it puts a lot of stress on your spine. So here's one thing, one thing to do. It's a postural reset. You guys can try this, stand up. If you sit a lot, you will stand up and you will try to bend yourself backwards. Okay, head back, arms back, lean back, hold it. Yeah, 10 seconds, relax. And do it a few times and it'll reset your muscles. Okay, and do it throughout the day. People are like, what are you doing? Just stretching, leave me alone. Like, <laughs> but that's what you're doing. Like, when you stop using certain muscles, it's use or, use, use it or lose it concept. So your body's organized in compartments. You have muscles that pull you forward, and you have muscles that pull you back. And if you don't use the muscles that pull you back, they atrophy, they weaken. So you gotta just wake them up. Okay? Needs it. Uh, subluxation causes dysfunction. How do we find them? All sorts of ways. We have. A lot of different, even posture alone. Posture is a great, a great way to find subluxation of somebody um, just by looking at the level of the ears, the shoulders, the hips. You know, it tells us a lot about what's going on. Feeling, we have different types of instruments. Obviously, through x ray, there's posture there. So, what should you do if you have subluxation? It's like your only easy question up there, I think. Come see you. Well, get, it, get adjusted. That's one thing, right? But subluxations are caused from three things, thoughts, traumas, toxins. So getting adjusted can, can help correct it. But if you are constantly putting yourself in a state that will cause subluxation, will adjustments fix it? No. It's, a, it's no different than taking pills. You're just kind of putting a Band-Aid on it. It doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean that like, let's say you have a desk job. It doesn't mean that I have a desk job, so I, there's no point getting adjusted. It's like, no, no, no. If you have a desk job, then you just have to be aware that there, there's a big stress that's caused from that. So you have to do things that's gonna counteract the effects of that. Make sense? What time are we out here? I think I'm on track. Yeah, okay. Um, so this is where we start, right? Initial intensive care. So we're trying to get the pain down. The second phase is where we're trying to reverse the problem that caused the pain to begin with. And so just coming in, you know, whatever, two, three times a week for whatever it is, X amount of weeks that you guys signed up for, 
Um, that's not the only thing you have to do, right? Like I'm saying, just be aware of your posture, be aware of your habits, be aware of what you're putting into your body, because um, that's gonna have a huge effect on correcting. If you're only here three times a week for whatever, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is, um, that's, that's not necessarily gonna be enough to just fix everything. So you have to be responsible, you have to take control. Like look at your life, we can't follow you all day every day. Look at your life and figure out what you might think be contributing to it. And if you don't know, ask us, and then we'll tell you. And then the maintenance part, once the once everything is corrected, back in place, back where it needs to be, the maintenance part is the best thing you can do. Meaning this is like braces and this is like wearing a retainer. If you totally stop, which you guys can do anything you want, that's one thing we do here. Like we never force anybody to do anything. We want people to understand what's going on and so they see the value in it and they actually choose to do it because they know it's gonna benefit their life. But if you completely stop and you go back to doing the same habits that brought you where you were to begin with, you will go back exactly to where you were before. Just a matter of time. Maintenance is not a three time a week thing. It's not a two time a week thing. It doesn't have to be a once a week thing. A lot of people end up coming once a month, once every six weeks or whatever it is. Like we have to find the magic number for you. Everybody's different based on habits and a lot of different factors. But if you can keep it there, you'll save yourself from ever going backwards. You'll save, your, you'll save yourself the pain. You'll save yourself the time of coming in multiple times a week. Obviously spending more money It'll save yourself potentially going through pain injections and possible surgeries and bouncing around from doctor to doctor to doctor. And I can't tell you how many people, when they do this, they stay where they are and they never go back and they never suffer like they did before. Okay? Maintenance is a universal principle. Maintain your car, maintain your teeth, maintain your, your, your furnace. Like maintain things if you want them to work properly, right? And if you don't, well, it, it actually ends up costing you more money. So this is a three-legged stool, like I talked about, things to do, things to avoid. And then the rhythm and the frequency. Why three times a week? Why not five? Why not one? Why not two? You could do five if you wanted to. Most people don't have time for that, which is why we typically don't recommend five. Um, three is just a, a manageable number for most people. If you truly don't have time for three, you can do two. It's really hard to get structural changes with one. So three is pretty good for most people. That seems to work. But it's just like going to the gym. The more you do it, the better your results will be. And if you do it over a period of time, better your results are gonna be as well, right? So this is not, this is done best if it's done um, consistently over time, that's what I wanted to say. Make sense? Um, and the other thing with this, like, you know, I some I heard this from, I can't remember who, but somebody said chiropractic is something, and it's just the same as exercise or anything, but it's done with you, not for you, right? So like you have to take care of yourself. This is a piece of the puzzle, but it's not gonna help everything, okay? And I've even heard some people saying like, I went to a chiropractor and he told me all I have to do is get adjusted and it's gonna fix my cancer. It's like, hmm. it's not how health works. Mm -hmm. But really, you know, it's, it's not gonna fix all your problems. It is very, very powerful, and I'll tell you how powerful it can be in, in a second, but these reviews, this is not to brag about us much, maybe a little bit, but these reviews are here all by patients that followed the care plan that was recommended to them. And I said earlier, I said a lot of things earlier as I'm bringing this up a lot, but um, I don't know if I've ever really gotten a review from somebody who never followed a care plan. Isn't that funny? Like people that followed it got awesome results. They were excited, they were happy, they felt great, they functioned well, so they left the review. Which you guys are happy at some point you don't have to do it now but at some point go ahead if that helps us so pre and post stuff so look at the changes here look at the big hump here right much straighter straight neck curved neck big bend here in the spine rather straight there or straighter so i mean it can create some pretty big structural changes in the spine i love this we can be our own worst enemies for sure i know i can are you as healthy as you want to be Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. I'm not. These aren't questions I can answer for you. What are you going to do after, or going to have to do to get there? If you don't know, which is, you, you know, lottery and quit your job and yeah, I know, have a dietitian and yeah, yeah. And not really care, <laughs> right? But these are fun things to think of. Like, what do I have to do to, to get better? It's like getting adjusted. Yeah, it's going to help a lot. It's not going to fix everything, like I said. So if you're not exercising regularly, I'd highly encourage you to do it. It doesn't mean you have to go to a gym. I like gyms, but you can do things at home. 
Easy. Too hard, too expensive, too busy, family, job, uh, excuses, excuses, excuses. Not for coming here. This is why people don't get healthy. Like even today, uh, one of the pages said, I don't go to gym because it's too expensive, but she smokes a pack a day. <laughs> like it's 30 bucks to go to the gym. That's your three packs of cigarettes or whatever. a month at Planet Fitness. Yeah, it's exactly right. I know. <laughs> and you get free payment. I know. But, oh, I can't afford to go to a gym. I'm like, you know what? When it comes down to that, people just prioritize things. That people will spend money on the things they value. So it's like, you know, I, I don't think going to a gym is an expense at all. I think it's honestly an investment. I don't think it costs me anything to go to a gym because I know the benefit it's giving me. And I feel the exact same way about chiropractic care or eating a healthy diet. I don't see it as being an expense to me. It's like, if you think it's expensive trying to be healthy, try being sick. See what that's going to cost you. It's insane. So this is the third reason why most of us don't get healthy because we wait too long for symptoms. Like, I feel fine, I look fine, I don't big deal, right? Feel procrastinating. Or they get an ache, in, an ache or a pain somewhere and it goes away after a week so they forget it. And then it comes back three months later and it kind of stays for maybe two weeks it goes away again. And then a year later it comes back and now it's really staying longer but it goes away again, right? And everybody knows this story. But that's one of the worst things you can do. It really is. If I can, you know, really drive anything home for anything that you do in your life, if it's good for you, don't wait. Do it. Um... You guys can follow me because I post a lot of really cool stuff on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. It's either health related or you know things that'll just keep you guys pumped up and encouraged and motivated. Keep your, uh, I guess, just keep your eye on the right thing when it comes to your life. So now um, my story, like with chiropractic, why did I become a chiropractor? It wasn't because I couldn't go to med school. I never wanted to go to med school because that's a common question. Like, why didn't you go to med school? It's like, guess what? I didn't want to go to med school. It's like, oh, that's weird. You really wanted to become a chiropractor? Like, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? But so anyway, so um, this was about, I guess almost 20 years ago, probably 20, uh, over 20 years ago now. Um, so my dad became very ill from, you know, going to like feeling well and looking fine and everything else. All of a sudden his health just started to decline and started to decline really, really fast. His, his skin started turning gray because he wasn't getting, his lungs weren't absorbing any oxygen. He was, he succumbed to taking Ventolin about every 20, 30 minutes throughout the day, doing that all day long, every day. And then he started, you know, it wasn't working. So he had to go to multiple specialists and the specialist told him he needed a heart and double lung transplant. And he was in his early forties. And so he did his research and, you know, terrible surgery. Some don't survive. The ones that do don't have a great quality of life because they're taking a ton of immunosuppressant drugs, right? To prevent the rejection of the organs. So he decided not to do it. And instead, went to a chiropractor. Weird. The chiropractor found he had subluxations in the area that was going to where his lungs. His heart and lungs. Yeah. So T1 through T4. So his spine was completely twisted, putting pressure on all those nerves, and it was shutting down his organs. And so he got that corrected. He didn't just go in a couple times and get cracked. He got it corrected. And once everything was back in place where it needed to be, what do you think happened to his health? <sighs> Took off, went back to the specialist. The specialist did all the tests, and there was no evidence that he ever had any kind of heart or lung pathology whatsoever. And he was in the room with a cardiologist for two hours. And most people either don't see the cardiologist to see the PA, or they're in the room with the cardiologist for like two minutes, not two hours. So the cardiologist was like blown away, talked to my dad. My dad was a chiropractor at the time, so this is like a plumber with a leaky faucet kind of a story. He wasn't taking care of himself because he looked fine and felt fine. Right, so he was in the room with, two, uh, with the cardiologist for two hours talking about all this stuff. And at the end of the conversation, the, card the cardiologist told him, that was like, we have to study this because this is unbelievable. Because he'd never seen somebody who needed a heart and double lung transplant not get it and then go from being, you know, totally sick to totally healthy. Cool story. Not unique to my dad. Lots of cool chiropractic stories like that. Which is why I want to give you guys a little book here. Anybody like reading? My dad's on every medication under the sun. What's that? <laughs> so my dad's on every medication under the sun. Yeah, now you're thinking, right? And this is, I mean, this is real stuff. Like, we practice what we preach to. 
So when we're sick, the first thing we do, we get adjusted. We obviously look at our diet and everything else. Um, oh, this is one, hang on. You guys want to share one? Yeah. So these are like, they're very short stories, but this is a book that I helped put together. And so this is like, that's my dad's story there. The chiropractic thing like, it's four pages. Cool. But all these stories are really, they're just, they're fun to read. And there might be some in there that'll make you cry. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you would only read one in this book, read this one. It's four pages, it'll take you like five minutes. Um, and it could really change your life and your family's life. And, you know how you look at your body. Any questions? Got anything? Nope. Am I forgetting anything? No. Nope, you're good. Yeah. Um, oh no. Uh, family. Oh yeah, I am forgetting that. Okay. So since you guys came today, because you're action takers, you actually want to get better. So like, your whole family gets to check up for free, and it only lasts seven days. And I do that because of this. Because I don't want people to procrastinate. So one of the best things I can do is be a little thorn in your side and push you to get your family checked. It costs them nothing at all. If they need something, we can help them. And if they don't, then they don't have to do anything. Well, they don't have to do anything either way. But, you know, you get what it is, Wednesday. So all you have to do is, they don't have to come in within seven days. You guys just have to schedule them if you want. Okay? Is that cool? Cool. cool. Good? Cool beans. Sorry to keep you waiting and sorry for plugging it in the wrong <laughs> thing. The wrong port, the wrong port.